Hey guys, it's Adam Trigger, wagertalk.com, here to talk to you about Game 5 Yankees Guardians from Progressive Field in Cleveland, Ohio, later tonight. But first, the seasons are about to change. It's been a phenomenal baseball season across the board for me. MLB, KBO, all those free AAA winners I gave out on Twitter all season long. It's been a great summer, but we're heading into the winter. We're heading into college basketball season, and right now, you can get my college basketball picks for the lowest rate. You're going to be able to get them all year using coupon code TRIGCBB, T-R-I-G-C-B-B, full season college hoops, all access for just $3.95. I'm up close to 50 units of profit in college basketball across the last two seasons. I intend to do it again this year, and I'd love to have you along with me from tip off on November 4th through one shining moment on Championship Monday all the way in April. It's going to be a great season, and I hope you join me for that. But we still have baseball to talk. We're still in the championship series. We still have the World Series ahead of us. And we have a very big, pivotal game five here as the Guardians face elimination tonight. Uh, this series, first of all, has been outstanding. I know it's Yankees 3-1. They, they may, you could make the argument that they were one strike away from, from maybe sweeping this series. But the last two games have been back and forth. Fantastic baseball. Guardians had a chance last night and they couldn't get it done. Series could easily be 2 2. And, you know, I think if you watch my video on TikTok yesterday, I gave Yankees out as the lean. And I said, the reason I wasn't betting that game yesterday, betting the Yankees in that game, was the bullpens really look like it could be a complete free for all. And that's exactly what happened. Yankees have a 6 2 lead. They couldn't get high leverage outs. They kind of ran out of arms at the end. Same thing sort of happened to the Guardians. And the Yankees ended up on the right side of an 8-6 sort of thriller right there by getting the Class A again in the ninth. A lot of that is in play here, but I think the Guardians have an edge, and I'm going to explain why. So I I think it I think if Steven Vogt manages this game the way I think he's going to, it gives the Guardians a slight edge. And you know, given the fact that the Guardians are at home here, where they have they still have the best home record of any American League team this season. And now that you're getting plus money with the Guardians, the way the market is shifting, I do think I'm going to make a pretty strong case for Guardians plus 110, plus 105, plus 110 to, to, to be the play here. Now, I want to start with the Yankees, and I want to work back to front. Let's talk Yankees bullpen first. Luke Weaver is rested, okay? That's what you're going to hear. Well, Yankees have Luke Weaver. Great. If Luke Weaver's in this game, the Guardians have probably already lost. And, and I don't even think you can matter-of-factly say that because if Luke Weaver's in this game, it means the Guardians are probably behind, but they've now gotten to him twice. Remember, he came into game two. I'm not sure why. I, I don't. I, I didn't agree with that move by Boone to bring him in in game two when the Yankees had taken a 6-2 lead. He gives up the home run to Jose Ramirez. Now, it didn't matter. It, it, didn't, uh, you know, it didn't affect that, that game, but it certainly gave the, the Guardians a little bit more of a look at him and then Weaver, of course, the, the shot heard around the world at this point. Big Christmas, John Kenzie Noel, game three, uh, an absolute missile to tie that game off of Weaver. So at, at worst, the Guardians have confidence that they can score off Weaver. They've now done it in two straight games. Outside of Weaver, the Yankees are in big trouble here from a pitching standpoint. Clay Holmes has now pitched in four or five. He wasn't effective yesterday. He's not going to pitch here. Tommy Canely has pitched in three of four. Theoretically, he's probably okay to go in this spot, but I thought he was really bailed out by a couple of, of calls in that game yesterday, a couple of close pitches. I didn't think he had his best stuff. And I would, I mean, if I'm the Guardians, I have no problem, you know, seeing Tommy Canely in this game in a high leverage spot. Ian Hamilton's hurt. He's now off the roster. His replacement yesterday, Mark Leiter, not good. I can't imagine the Yankees really want to have Leiter in a tough situation here. Tim Hill's pitched in every single game of this series so far for the Yankees. My guess is he's probably available for a matchup left on left, like to get out of a tough spot, but you're not going to get anything other than like, you know, maybe like a situational one, two batter spot for him here. And again, he's also pitched in four straight games. So, you know, that's not, not ideal. So what I think the Yankees pitching is going to look like is this. We know Carlos Rodon's going to start. He was fantastic in game one, but he's also been very inconsistent. He was knocked around by the Royals to start before. So 
even though Rodon pitched very well in game one, I don't think that you can like look at what he's done this year and say, yeah, he's going to go out another six, six inning wipeout start, nine strikeouts. I don't think you can really, you know, count on that if you're the Yankees. What that probably means is Marcus Stroman is, is likely the next guy up. Again, he, he's been – Stroman was better than I thought he was going to be this year. But he also hasn't pitched since, since September 25th. And the last time we saw Stroman on September 25th against the Orioles, he was blown up 10 hits in three innings, didn't pitch particularly well. So if you're the Yankees with a 3-1 lead in this series, it's almost a guarantee it's going to be Radon to Stroman, and then you're probably looking at Tim Meza and Luke Weaver in high leverage in high leverage spots. Again, Weaver's fine, but I don't think Weaver's coming out here until like either you know the eighth or ninth inning if the Yankees have a lead. So you still have if you're the Yankees, you still have to get to that point with Radon, Stroman, Meza, maybe Hill for a matchup. That's that's less than ideal. Now, you could make the argument that the Guardians are very much in the same boat. And I would say you're not wrong about that. That's true. The Guardians have burned through every relief op- relief option they have at this point. But I think this sets up for the Guardians because I think the way Vote is going to play this is a little bit different than he's played the first four games in this series. Tanner Vibe is going to start for here for the Guardians. And I think that's very important. Stephen Vogt saw that Bybee did not have it in game two and went out and got him in the second inning of a game that he had only thrown 39 pitches. Now, Bybee could have settled in. He's a pro. He's your most consistent starter. He's your ace, right? There's a good chance he settles into that game, gets through five or six. But what I think Vogt saw there in that spot was, my guy doesn't have his best stuff. We are now trailing. And we're looking at probably going down 2 nothing in this series. If that ends up being the case, we have to have Bybee give us a big start in game five, or we're not going to win this series. And I think Vote saw that. I think that's why he went and got him so early in game two. What that means, Bybee only throws 39 pitches. He's got plenty of time to rest. And, and I think the, the idea is, now obviously, anything can happen. The Yankees might have his number. But Bybee comes into this start knowing he's got to give six or seven innings. And I'm sure that was the message that was sent to him. Hey, we're not really taking you out here because we don't think you can work through it and have a decent start. But this is the playoffs. If you don't win for us in game five, we're not winning this series. So take the rest of the night off and, and, and get the rest you need to go pitch the best game of your playoffs in game five, which is very possible. Tanner Bybee this year, 1.12 whip. He threw 173.2 innings. He was the Guardians best pitcher. He was he was. He came up big for the Guardians in the series with the Tigers. Two very strong outings there. So I would not be at all surprised if Bybee comes out and throws six or seven really good innings here. Um, I I don't think his performance in game two should should discount what he's been all year and the fact that at home with the crowd behind him, he could easily come out and fire six or seven innings. I think where Vogt goes next is going to be very interesting, and I think it's going to be Ben Lively. So Lively was added to the ALCS roster after Cobb got hurt in game one. And he kind of quietly came in, threw an inning and a third of relief in game two, was pretty good. But I've been watching Ben Lively pitch for years. I watched most of his starts in Korea. I I know exactly what this guy is going to give and what he's going to do. And I really think it could mess with the Yankees here. Lively is a command guy. He's going to throw 90. He doesn't, he throws 89, 90, 91 at the most, but he's all about command, all about location. When he's on, he's putting it on the black and he, and he gets some soft contact. It can be very frustrating to hit. And he can be very frustrating to hitters that have been geared up for four games to hit high leverage, high velo relief options that the guardians have, right? Like the Yankees have had to gear up for, for Emmanuel Classe throwing 100, 101, um, Smith out of the bullpen, Gaddis. Like, that's what the Yankees have, have been geared up to hit. And now you're probably going to see Bybee to Ben Lively coming in, throwing 90 on the black. And, and I really think it could mess with this Yankees lineup a little bit, especially because I didn't think he looked all that bad in relief in game two. And 
you know, he's a veteran at this point. I don't think him pitching out of the bullpen is going to mess with him. And, and, you know, the other thing, Lively was arguably the Guardian's second most consistent pitcher this year. Certainly their second most consistent starter. 3.81 ERA and 1.25 whip in one and 151 innings pitch for Ben Lively this year. I actually don't think he's been used enough in this playoff so far for the Guardians. I think you're going to get Bybee to Lively, and if they both have it, they're going to put the Guardians in a great position to win this game. Guardians plus 107 with the season on the line at home where they've been awesome all year makes the most sense in game five. So if I add this to my client card, I will tweet it out. Make sure you're following me on all platforms at Adam Trigger WT. I like the Guardians in game five, and I will let you know throughout the day, this is the one nice thing about the MLB playoffs. These lines really don't move a ton. So I'll probably circle back in a few hours, decide if I'm going to play this or not. But the only way I'm playing game five is the Guardians. And hopefully we get one more game in this series because it's been a great series so far. Like and subscribe to the Wager Talk YouTube channel so we can continue bringing you free pick videos. And also give me a follow on all platforms at Adam Trigger WT. Hope you guys all have a great weekend. We'll talk to you soon.